Good morning, folks. Apart from the sun, it's a very active day. We've got new resources, candy for the eyes and the mind, major revelations in climate and about solar storms. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last 24 hours on the sun finally bringing the dark southern coronal hole into view. While there are no active regions facing Earth or solar flares, we will see intensified solar wind from those dark field emanation points early next week. Today, the solar wind is already getting active. Up in blue, we see a top of the panel run switching to mid bottom panel yesterday evening. This is the phi angle shift, us hitting the sun's current sheet, and it's driving changes in plasma density, plasma speed, and stream magnetism that is bringing geomagnetic conditions back a bit. That's the green marks bottom right. Folks, this is the new RSOE EDIS alert map. The old ones seem to be discontinued to some degree the last 18 months. Not anymore. They've been building this. Takes moments to get used to the new format and an appropriate new suit now dons one of our favorite tools from the last decade. It's in our link list below the video today. Folks, La Nina is here. We have plunged in temperatures of the East Central Pacific Ocean over the last six months, and when we view the current sea surface temperature anomaly, oh boy does that East Central blue dominate one's field of vision. Otherwise, it's been summer in the north and winter in the south, which is why the oceans seem warmer up north with more blue in the south there. Up next, let's drain those oceans. This new animation from NASA SVS shows the breadth of underwater mountain ranges and valleys. But there is something on here you can't see, and honestly, it would be too much when modeling at a global level. Those would be the underwater canyons running off the land. The mainstream explanation for these is turbidity currents, and that's utterly unsatisfying for the largest of the features, carved through the rock for hundreds of miles down to the bottom of the sea. Such features are not carved in situ under the ocean, but in the sloshing of the ocean's eruption from its bed and onto the land in the cyclical deluge, where afterwards, tremendous runoffs carve those coasts. Folks, there's a new long-term Earth temperature chart. It goes back 68 million years, and just recall that before this, the Earth was supposed to be even hotter, and more exploding with life than in the modern eras. And to put this all in perspective, the modern climate warming of the last century, if you really can't pick it out, I don't blame you. There's only so much I can zoom in on an ant from the moon. Those high curve RCP projections to the right of it are the ones we've shown this year to be too high, overly sensitive to carbon, in disagreement with paleoclimate data, and with enormous uncertainties in cloud production and their effects. It's a pretty chart, and it's good for perspective. And now we come to excellence animated into prose and a peer-reviewed manuscript. Previous shifts in climate had much more to do with the presence or lack of volcanic cooling aerosols than previously believed, and this is based on the new chemistry showing exactly how the sulfuric components are merging and interacting with the ash. This is critical, because more important in driving global warming than the grand solar maximum of the last 12,000 years having taken place in the 1900s is the fact that we are at the modern volcanic cooling minimum. You could find the 1991 Pinatubo blast, realize that it was the largest of the century and nothing has come close to it since then, not even the big Indonesia booms in 2012 through 2019. We are continuing to lack the major stratospheric injections of up to 15 to 20 miles or higher. And by the way, for some reason, all they use in climate models is within that green bracketed area. When volcanoes do return, as the sun has already exited the grand maximum, things are going to change on this planet very quickly. Last but not least, many are seeing this week's call for finalization of the space weather forecasting and risk aversion plans. These were actually started by Obama before he left office, but they are not progressing as well as I'd hoped. The atrocious, worst disaster in Earth's record type of event they described from the sun is not even close to the real gravity of the situation. They model the 1859 super flare storm with the 1859 Earth's magnetic field strength. It's much weaker now. This is, of course, the central topic of this channel. The sun, the weather, the earthquakes, our way of life, in the era of Earth's ongoing magnetic field reversal. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.